In this presentation, we will focus on Fermat's literal theorem. Let's dive into the outcomes first. Upon the completion of the session, the learner will be able to Outcome number 1, we will know the Fermat's little theorem and outcome number 2, we will understand the working of Fermat's theorem with examples. Let's dive into the theorem first. This Fermat's little theorem states that if P is a prime number and A is a positive integer not divisible by P, then a power p minus 1 is congruent to 1 mod p. So, if you note here, this Fermat's little theorem states that when you take a prime number p and a positive integer a, any positive integer a, but the only condition is this a is not divisible by p. So, that is what the Fermat's little theorem initial condition is. If these two conditions are set, like p is a prime number and a is any positive integer not divisible by p, then a power p minus 1 is congruent to 1 mod p. This theorem will be really helpful in solving a lot of cryptographic problems. We have witnessed a lot of positive comments about Neso Academy that Neso Academy presents the content in a structured and an organized manner. And here is one more proof for that. Can you see here, already we have seen about congruences in the previous lectures. We have already dealt about the modular exponentiation that too with these kind of powers, right? So, a power p minus 1 mod p. Also, we have seen about the prime numbers in the previous lectures. So, solving problems using Fermat's little theorem becomes an easy task for us because we have acquired all the basics that are required to solve these kind of problems. Why waiting? Let's dive into example number 1. Does Fermat's theorem hold true for p is equal to 5 and a is equal to 2? We are required to check whether the Fermat's theorem holds true for these values. Let's solve this now. So, what are the given information? P is equal to 5 and A is equal to 2, right? So, we have the prime number as 5 and A is equal to 2. Let's verify the initial conditions are met. Is P a prime number? Yes, this 5 is a prime number. Is A a positive integer? And A is not divisible by P. So, the initial conditions are met. So, we can blindly say that Fermat's theorem holds true for P is equal to 5 and A is equal to 2. Anyway, let's prove this. As per the Fermat's theorem, we know a power p minus 1 is congruent to 1 mod p. Let's just substitute those values. So, we get 2 power 5 minus 1 is congruent to 1 mod 5. So, 2 power 5 minus 1 is actually 2 power 4. So, 2 power 4 is congruent to 1 mod 5. You can use modular exponentiation or simply you can use this value 2 power 4 is 16. So, we get 16 is congruent to 1 mod 5. We know how to solve this, right? So, this number 16. When it is divided by 5, are we getting 1 as the remainder? Yes, 16 when it is divided by 5, 5 3 times 15 and the remainder is obviously 1. So, we can conclude that Fermat's theorem holds true for p is equal to 5 and a is equal to 2. This is the answer for this question. I hope example number 1 is clear to you. Let's see example number 2. In this example, we are going to prove Fermat's theorem holds true for p is equal to 13 and a is equal to 11. So, let's solve this now. We know the given data are prime number 13 and the positive integer a is 11 and this 11 is not divisible by p. So, let's prove this anyway. So, we know Fermat's theorem states that a power p minus 1 is congruent to 1 mod p where a is any positive integer. So, let's substitute the values what is given in the question. So, we get 11 power 13 minus 1 is congruent to 1 mod 13. So, we will simplify this 11 power 12 is congruent to 1 mod 13. So, we are going to use modular exponentiation to solve this 11 power 12 mod 13. But when you refer my previous lectures titled modular exponentiation, I have given a lot of shortcuts for solving these kind of problems. So, here you just see it is 11, it is 13, right? We can reduce this value. So, 11 is 2 shortage from 13. So, we can use it as minus 2 whole power 12 is congruent to 1 mod 13. Now, we can easily simplify this. You can simplify this using any method, but see how I am doing here. I am just breaking this 12 into 4 into 3, right? So, minus 2 power 4 into 3 is congruent to 1 mod 13. We get 3. We are getting 3 here. Minus 2 to the power 4 is what? 16, right? 16 to the power 3, right? So, 16 when it is divided by 13, what we will get? 16 divided by 13, we get 3 as the remainder. So, we get 3. 3 to the power 3. This power 3 remains the same. So, 3 to the power 3 is what? 
27. So 27 when it is divided by 13, 13 2 times 26. So Fermat's theorem holds true for P is equal to 13 and A is equal to 11. See, you can solve this in any method, but I request you to apply the easiest way of solving this problem without using calculators. So I think example number 2 is also clear to you. So we are clear that Fermat's theorem holds true for P is equal to 13 and A is equal to 11. Let's see the last example for the day, example number 3. The question is, prove Fermat's theorem does not hold for P is equal to 6 and A is equal to 2. If you see here, this P is not a prime number. So from this, we can easily conclude that Fermat's theorem will not hold true because P is not a prime number because 6 is not a prime number. If the number what is given for P itself is not a prime number, we can easily say that Fermat's theorem will not hold true for these values. Anyway, let's solve it. We know as per the Fermat's theorem, A power P minus 1 is congruent to 1 mod P. We will apply the values 2 power 6 minus 1 is congruent to 1 mod 6 and 2 power 5 is congruent to 1 mod 6. We will directly use this value 2 power 5, it is 32, right? So 32 is congruent to 1 mod 6. 32 when it is divided by 6, what we will get? The remainder is 2. So this is an invalid congruence. So obviously the answer for this question is for Matt's theorem does not hold true for P is equal to 6 and A is equal to 2. Before we complete this lecture, let's see the homework question. The question is, does Fermat's theorem hold true for the prime number 11 with the integer 5? I request you to solve this and post your answers in the comment section. I hope now you understood the Fermat's little theorem and we also have understood the working of Fermat's theorem with examples. Please note here, in this subject, we are going to use the Fermat's theorem as an application. So I am not going to prove Fermat's theorem. Rather, we are going to use the Fermat's theorem to solve our problems in cryptography. And that's it guys. I hope the session is informative and thank you for watching.